welcome to this course on polymers. Uh, in this course, uh, we have focused not only on the molecular picture, we are looking at the bulk response as well as uh, engineering applications. And uh, one of the most underlying uh, features related to the overall response of material is related to molecular interactions. So, in this lecture, we will briefly summarize uh, what are these molecular interactions and how they have an influence on uh, properties or applications will be discussed throughout the course. And uh, so, in this uh, third week, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, molecular arrangements and uh, the solid states of polymer and the transition from uh, liquid like states to solid like states. And in this particular lecture, uh, the focus will be on learning the concepts related to interactions. And we will do this by first uh, quickly looking at what are the set of uh, molecular interactions. Uh, the quantitative understanding is reached if we look at simple models and uh, in this course, uh, we may not use uh, many of these models, but uh, the concepts behind these models are very useful for us to think in terms of bulk response of materials also. And uh, many times, uh, the molecular uh, level information uh, can be complex to uh, understand or maybe more complex to uh, arrive at quick decision making uh, set of guidelines, uh, we use uh, empirical or semi empirical approaches. So, even though we know that the underlying interactions are at the molecular level, we may form an empirical or semi empirical uh, formulation, which can give us quick uh, decision making capabilities. So, we will look at couple of uh, examples of this approach, which are used in polymers. So, when we look at uh, interactions uh, for macromolecules, uh, at the molecular level, uh, we can uh, look at uh, the uh, interactions which are due to bonds which are there, covalent bonds. Uh, and we have seen that these covalent bonds are either carbon carbon or carbon oxygen or carbon sulfur and uh, silicon oxygen. So, depending on uh, the nature of uh, macromolecule, uh, we can have a variety of these bonds. And uh, so, rotation vibration uh, of these bonds. Uh, leads to uh, one set of interactions. And these are of course, between neighboring atoms. Uh, so, the two atoms which are bonded to each other can react uh, this way. Uh, so, uh, when we have uh, uh, let us say one atom and another atom and they are bonded, then uh, what happens is uh, there is a vibration possible, there is a vibration possible in uh, different dimensions. And then, uh, we, if we have, uh, let us say, a set of uh, these atoms, then also there is uh, bending possible. And so, all of these features are related to bond. And uh, an important aspect of these bond and how the uh, their position is, their rotation is also is related to the polarization of the material. Because many of these bonds will have a polarity, which means a partial charge separation, where there will be a plus and minus charge separation and across this bond. And so, there are, uh, uh, there is polarity present. And uh, what happens to this polarity as a function of uh, the rotation and vibration on bonds will be of great interest when we are looking at the dielectric properties or electrical properties of these macromolecules. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when we look at non bonded interactions, uh, they could be both repulsive and attractive. And in case of macromolecules, what is very crucial is we have interactions within a macromolecule itself. Because macromolecule is such a long uh, uh, giant object, there are uh, different parts of uh, same macromolecules which interact with each other. And so, uh, you could have uh, intramolecular or inter macromolecule. So, therefore, if uh, there is another uh, macromolecule present, uh, then of course, you can again have uh, interactions between these uh, different macromolecules also. And what are the examples? Uh, we have already seen when we looked at uh, expanded chain that uh, we have uh, same uh, molecule, same space cannot be occupied by two different parts of the macromolecule or two different macromolecule. This gave us uh, to the model which was we called expanded chain. And uh, there is Van der Waals attraction. So, excluded volume is an example of repulsion, Van der Waals uh, will lead to attraction. And of course, there are several other uh, interactions that we are familiar with, whether hydrogen bonding or hydrophobic interactions. Uh, we can have charge charge interactions, which we call electrostatic, or we could have interactions between 
the polar uh, bonds or dipoles which are available in the sample. And uh, uh, why all of this is important uh, is uh, highlighted in this question related to whether two polymers can mix and if at all they mix, why do they mix. So, here we are talking about uh, a polymer uh, polyvinyl fluoride and another polymer polyacrylate. And uh, the question is uh, these two are miscible, which means if we mix, if we make polyacrylate, if we make polyvinyl fluoride and mix them together, there is a molecular mixing. So, uh, the two polymers will uh, in fact uh, interact with each other and mix. So, the question is what is the nature of interaction which leads to this miscibility? So, is the interaction uh, because uh, there is acid on one polymer and base on another polymer? Is it because both the polymers can do hydrogen bonding and therefore interact with each other? Do they have dipoles and therefore the dipoles can interact favorably and lead to favorable interactions or is it because uh, one has an ion and another has a dipole. So, I would suggest uh, looking at uh, polyacrylate and po polyvinyl fluoride structures and try to spot whether you can see if there is a presence of polarity, is there an ion, is there a dipole and then try to answer this question. We will go ahead and look at uh, some of the specifics of uh, these different types of uh, non-bonded interactions and what we notice is uh, they are acting over uh, range of distances. Uh, here if let us say r is the distance between the two atoms or molecules which are interacting, uh, many of these have a very different range. So, if you look at the interaction as a function of r, they have very different interaction. So, for example, 1 over r to uh, r to the power 12 uh, will be something like this while 1 over r will be very gradual. So, some of them are long distance interactions. So, even if atoms and molecules are far apart, they can feel the force of attraction. Uh, just to remind you that uh, derivative of uh, this is nothing but force. And all of you remember that uh, charge char charge interaction potential is 1 over r, but the force is 1 over r squared because it is derivative with respect to r. And so, uh, given that there are uh, these different ranges over these uh, uh, interactions uh, are present, macromolecular behavior depends very strongly on which of these uh, interactions are present in a material. Of course, these interactions could also be between a macromolecule and the surrounding solvent or a diluent or a monomer, whatever may be the small molecule present along with the macromolecule. Just to uh, let you think little bit more on this uh, as an exercise, what you can do is uh, look at uh, these uh, four polymers and try to justify why is the rank of polarity given in this way. So, why is nylon ranked as much higher polarity compared to natural rubber? So, again you can go and look at the formula and you can quickly spot what are the bonds, what are the groups which are responsible for polarity. Uh, one general guideline is that whenever heteroatoms are present, nitrogen, oxygen that immediately leads to polarity, nitrogen. So, therefore, you can try to see uh, whether uh, which of these have that uh, aromatic group versus uh, a methyl or alkyl groups again has very different uh, uh, levels of polarity. So, a generic understanding of what a macromolecule is and what set of interactions are there helps us in understanding what the behavior is. Uh, for example, when I have uh, discussed the behavior of uh, uh, nylon and uh, I highlighted that uh, whether moisture is there or not, the commercial companies will always give you nylon properties dry and uh, under some condition, conditioned sample. And so, that is because nylon because of its polarity can absorb lot of water. So, therefore, the behavior of nylon is apparent uh, based on our understanding of what are the nature of interactions that are present. Just to highlight given that we have uh, placed so much emphasis on uh, the interactions and of course, in this ranking list uh, natural rubber is the lowest in terms of uh, polarity and uh, any of these uh, stronger interactions present there. This is a question that rubbers are a class of polymers which are known for high intermolecular po forces or low intermolecular forces. Uh, just to uh, give you a hint that uh, these uh, the middle two are not the answers. 
uh, it is not uh, high T g and uh, it is not uh, the uh, crystallinity in rubber. So, uh, are their intermolecular forces very high in rubber or they are low in rubber? Just ponder over this fact. And uh, just to give a get a quantitative feel for the interactions, uh, what we saw is uh, 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 examples of how uh, interaction changes as a function of uh, distance between two uh, entities. And uh, so, r is the distance and uh, we look at the uh, interaction. So, for example, excluded volume interaction if we were to uh, look at, one uh, way to look at it is if this is uh, a molecule and this is another molecule, they can come close and touch each other and as soon as they touch each other, they cannot go any further. So, this uh, is called hard sphere and uh, if you look at uh, the interaction for hard sphere, it is just an interaction where up to some distance. So, what is this distance related to this distance? So, if A is the radius of uh, spheres, then this will be 2A. So, the idea of hard sphere model is that there is no interaction at all. So, this is like uh, two balls uh, or two carom uh, uh, the coins when they are uh, away from each other, even if they are as soon as they touch only there is an interaction and that is repulsive interaction, they cannot really get any closer. So, that is a hard sphere model. When we include some attraction, uh, the uh, square well uh, potential is, uh, so it includes a repulsion and uh, an attraction. Just go back and try to think in terms of how this interaction potential is repulsive or attractive whether it is positive or negative. And so, uh, this part of uh, interaction indicates repulsion while uh, this part of, so we have what is called an attractive well. And so, if uh, molecules have distance uh, r, Then and if they are uh, somewhere, this is the distance, then uh, what happens is no interaction is felt. If they, this is the distance, then they will attract each other. If uh, the distance approaches this, then they will repel each other. Now, why does this happen? I mean, so why, why should, uh, if attraction is there, why should the material, the two atoms and molecules repel or go apart? Remember that with all of this, there is always presence of thermal energy. And so, quite often uh, what happens to these atoms and molecules and how they are distributed with respect to each other will depend on the relative ratio between the interaction energy which is present and the thermal energy which is present. And of course, the most common example of uh, the uh, such interaction is Leonard Jones, which also includes both repulsive and attractive. And uh, this is a very strong repulsive force which is uh, indicated as 1 over R 12 and then uh, the uh, in attractive force is indicated as 1 over R 6. So, based on this you can just look at the expression for Leonard Jodes potential and the force which is felt by uh, two sets of atoms and molecules which feel Leonard Jones potential. So, this is all at the scale of macro molecule or molecular level. Now, many times uh, it is helpful to look at uh, broader scales because in the end we are interested in bulk response. At the bulk scale, what we can do is uh, coarse grain or uh, make averaging of some of these interactions and talk up them on, on a coarse grain level. So, one example of coarse graining is to say that there is a steric repulsion. So, if we have a macromolecular chain and let us say it has a very bulky group what we can uh, do is instead of looking at uh, each individual atom which is present in this bulky group, we can say that the two bulky groups actually are sterically hindering each other. While we are analyzing crystallization behavior of such macromolecule or while we are looking at uh, orientation in such macromolecule, uh, we can look at uh, what happens due to say steric hindrance or steric repulsion. So, in this case we uh, do a coarse graining and look at a broader picture. Similar such things are uh, possible, let us say in case of uh, polymer solution, 
uh, when we say that uh, the macromolecule is uh, uh, flipping back and forth because of Brownian force. How is this Brownian force present? Because there is also surrounding solvent molecules and then there is interaction between polymer and solvent. And uh, so, in this uh, thermal mass of sol solution which is present, the macromolecule keeps on flipping back and forth. So, it experiences a Brownian force. Similarly, we could also talk in terms of the atoms of uh, solvent and uh, atoms of uh, and molecules of uh, macromolecule face friction with respect to each other. So, if let us say we have uh, a solvent present in the system and now if we are shearing this particular uh, macromolecule, so that some part of macromolecule has to move faster because we have put them uh, in the shearing, then what happens is there is relative friction between the solvent and the macromolecule and that we can call a drag between macromolecule and solvent. Similarly, if uh, this part of the macromolecule moves, it will move the solvent around it and uh, because of the solvent which uh, moves, then what happens is this part of macromolecule also feels the motion of the solvent. So, therefore, this is called a hydrodynamic interaction. So, these are all interactions not at the macro uh, at the molecular scale, but at a higher scale and at the coarse grain scale. If we have concentrated solutions, in which case uh, there are other sets of uh, macromolecules present, then what we will also have are entanglements between different macromolecules. And similarly, in case of uh, polymer melt also entanglements are present. So, depending on the situation, uh, macromolecular molecular interactions or coarse grain interactions may be helpful for us to analyze the bulk response. Even further, uh, if we want to uh, look at some quick engineering decision making and design decisions, then we may also adopt different approaches and two such approaches are based uh, on uh, viscosity measurement and also based on what is called a solubility parameter measurement. So, we will have chance later on to define this uh, intrinsic viscosity. Uh, it is a useful measure to try to capture what is the interaction between a macromolecule and the solvent. And uh, it uh, is called intrinsic viscosity because we are trying to ask the question that what will be the modification to viscosity if I add exceedingly small amount of polymer. So, in fact, this intrinsic viscosity if you go and look at the definition, the concentration of polymer tends to 0. If I just add very small amount of polymers to a solvent, what does that do to the solution? And the answer is based on the interactions which happen between the macromolecule and the solvent. And this is captured using an empirical uh, uh, correlation called mark uh, uh, equation and uh, which basically captures how does the uh, intrinsic viscosity depend on the molar mass of the polymer. And the uh, K and A depend on a specific polymer solvent system. So, anytime we are interested in a polymer solvent system and its behavior, we can just look up K and A uh, from the handbooks and uh, textbooks and references and then get an idea about what is the interaction. Similarly, there is also concept of solubility parameter uh, which is denoted using delta I for ith component. And uh, this is useful for uh, solvent selection or looking at miscibility in systems. And uh, we will again uh, when we discuss blends and solutions, we will see that the enthalpy of mixing uh, can be related to how different is the solubility parameter for component 1 and component 2. So, if let us say delta 1 is equal to delta 2, then there is no enthalpy of mixing. And then we will see that uh, miscibility will be uh, more likely. So, therefore, uh, we will have uh, much more chance to look at uh, these empirical uh, approaches when we discuss uh, polymer solutions and blends uh, in a uh, couple of uh, future lectures. And uh, with this, uh, we will uh, close uh, this lecture on interactions where we did a brief survey of molecular interactions, coarse grained interactions and also empirical approaches to account for interactions. And uh, if you go and look at uh, the polymers and if you did uh, the search related to what is the molecular structure, you can identify the dipoles which are present on both uh, vinyl fluoride as well as acrylate. And uh, 
interactions may not always be the deciding factor for a given material for a specific question. And so rubber elasticity, how much will rubber extend as a function of force on it can be answered using a model which is ideal, where we ignore the interactions and only look at entropic variations. Free energy is combination of internal energy and entropic contributions. And so internal energy and enthalpic contributions can be ignored while analyzing rubber elasticity. So therefore rubber is an example, especially while addressing its elasticity properties where interaction between molecules are only present in the form of macromolecule being able to stretch and contract. And therefore its entropic variation alone can explain many of its mechanical behavior. So therefore, uh, this is a very interesting uh, example to remind us that what is important and what is not important will depend on what is the material and what is the question we are asking. So with this, let us uh, pause here and we will continue our journey with the next lecture. Thank you.